transition here. This is your topic sentence. These are your, this is your list. You've got two things in the list. And then you could put this sentence at the end. Okay. So there, Luis, is your paragraph. So like I said, I'm kind of having you look at it in a different, it is a paragraph, but it's just mixed up. I do that in, in my writing classes. Actually, I use this. I take this and I just cut them all up into little slices. So and then I give I mix them all up and I give them to a group and I have them put put them into the right order. And that helps them see how to write a paragraph. Okay, now this should be this should spark some prior knowledge. To this day, Fred Shuttlesworth remains an unsung hero of the civil rights movement. What sparks your prior knowledge? What does this make you think of? What other unsung hero of the civil rights movement do we know about? Martin Luther King. Well, was he, un that's, this is my point. What does this word mean? Was Martin Luther King unsung? No. no. Who was the unsung hero? The ones not mentioned. It was the lady with um, Ruth. Claudette. Claudette, good, yeah. yeah. Claudette Colvin, remember? That's where you've heard this word before. Sandra, is that what you were going to say? Yeah, I was going to ask you about unsung, but it's okay. You can continue. No, do you have another question? No, it's okay. You're okay. talking about unsung. I was just curious yeah. about that word. So Yeah, so but remember this word on the Claudette Colvin? It means, and we got the idea from the contrast with Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was celebrated. When she died, she was mourned across the country because everyone knew she was. But we didn't even know about Claudette Colvin until they put that thing up at the Smithsonian. Remember that? So we say, oh yeah, I do know what this means. He was not known. Okay, so here's another unsung hero. So what are our questions about this sentence? Again, we've, we've found that Fred Shuttlesworth's name appears throughout the paragraph. Um, we've decided Fred Shuttleworth and the Civil Rights Movement is our topic. Um, we've we think this is the topic sentence, so we're going to ask questions about it. What questions do we ask? This, this needs, these need to be written down. You need to have done this. It's not enough to just circle them. Anyone have a question about Fred Shuttlesworth? What did he do? Why? Yeah, why? What did he do that made him a hero? Yeah, that's your question. No matter what happened, Fred Shuttlesworth was always convinced that he was doing God's work. Okay, now this takes some thinking. Could this be an answer? It could be. Okay, and again, you know, I'm doing this a little bit differently. I'm, we're looking, we're taking them one by one. We're not looking, sometimes it would help to look at all of them. Okay. <coughs> Did anybody circle this one? No. Okay. No. I'm going to put a question mark by this one. That might work. But it still doesn't answer the question of what did he do? And this is where we kind of have to decide on our details. Sometimes we don't get the answers that we want. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just going to say something vague like this. It's not going to say specific. The Ku Klux Klan tried to stop his organizing activities by bombing his house, but he refused to give in. Is that something he did? Yeah, this sounds like a better answer. Although the intrepid Shuttlesworth was active in every aspect of the civil rights movement, the media preferred to focus on the bravery of Martin Luther King, whose eloquence made him so quotable. What does this word mean? That's pronounced intrepid. Q, 
thief. And I have some clues here. Yeah. He was convinced he was doing God's work. He refused to give in. He was active. He was intrepid. Intrepid? Does it mean interfere? Is what? Does it have any similarity to interfere? Um, or interrupt? No. Never gave up? Never, never gave never up. Give up. Never gave up, never surrender. <laughs> That's what it means. He never gave up. It, there, there was a, one of the space shuttles or something was called the Intrepid. <laughs> yeah, the Intrepid. It means he never gave up. He, would, he moved forward. He, he didn't stop. Okay? What is eloquence? His eloquence made him quotable. So what do you think, Martin? His, well, his behavior, but is behavior quotable? He spoke well? Yeah, he spoke well. Okay. So again, this this is harder. This isn't as this isn't as straightforward as these answers. Okay, but what about this one? Diana Quarter's book, Carry Me Home, an account of both her Alabama childhood and the Civil Rights Movement, won a Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> so this is helpful. We can cross that off. And again, you're kind of doing, the, this is another lesson in test taking. Um, you know, people look at it and say, oh, I just don't take tests well. Um, but, you know, you have to realize that even though you're only being asked to circle letters, this is a reading exercise. If you read everything and understand it, it'll be a lot easier. So what are the two best answers? Yeah, I think they're not great. They don't, the only thing it tells us is this. He didn't do something like Claudette Colvin where he refused to give up a seat on a bus or something, something really concrete. Um, this is the only really concrete thing. But this also answers this question. It doesn't say what he did, but it does explain why <coughs> he was unsung. He was overshadowed by Martin Luther King. Now this is another good research project. If you get a research paper someday and you need a topic, go look up Fred Shuttlesworth. Who was he? Was he also a, a church? You know, was he a reverend or a minister? Or what, what, what was his story? That would be interesting to find out. Okay, yeah, so th these are the best answers. They're not great. This could go in there somewhere could go maybe our concluding sentence. Can we put this in the story anywhere? No, it doesn't make sense. Not really, yeah. unless, now I'm not familiar with this book, but it could be that it mentions him. I don't know. That, that might be the connection, but we don't have that information here. So as far as we're concerned, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Okay, this is a tricky one. This one, in this one, the answer, and this is kind of interesting, the book gives one answer, but in this one, I would give credit for different answers. Again, this is why you have to write the question, depending on which question you ask. There's a different set of answers depending on which question you ask, which is kind of interesting. Every year, thousands of, how do you pronounce this? Anyone know how to pronounce Tibet. it? Tibet. Well, that's the name of the. Tibetan. This is it's. Yeah, it's actually pronounced Tibetan for some Tibetan? reason. Tibet. Even though the country is pronounced Tibet, you usually hear that pronounced Tibet on the news. You hear it on the news a lot. I expect somebody also pronounces it Tibetan, but I heard it pronounced Tibetan. It's interesting how those things get changed. What does this word mean when you flee? What do you do? It, yeah, you run away. You run away. Not flee like cat flees. Okay, so they're going to flee their homeland in a desperate attempt to escape Chinese rule. What's your question? 
you have no questions about this? No, I'm, I just stopped talking. Oh, Louise is going to give somebody else a chance to answer. <laughs> okay, anybody else? But Luis, they're all they're also expecting to have you answer. Not gonna. Okay. We here's the thing about this. We know why they're escaping to escape Chinese rule. So what's the next question? What's for Chinese rule? Okay, well that that's another good. That's another question. What, what is it that we need, they need to escape it? What are the Chinese doing in Tibet that people feel they need to escape it? Now, but this is, here's a clue. Children. It doesn't say people. It says children. Yeah, so, yeah, why just children? And if it is just children, how? Are children escaping by themselves? Right? Does that make sense? Again, if you read that sentence carefully, you think, wait a minute, this isn't quite as clear as it sounds. Okay. Very often, the children are sent on their journey by parents who want their sons and daughters to be Tibetan rather than Chinese or Tibetan. How are you going to pronounce it? Oh, uh, I kind of, uh, prior knowledge, yeah. they don't want the, the kids to, to start um, uh, accepting Chinese rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're their, you know, their, their, their military ways. Right, exactly. Yeah, this gives a little bit of information here. The Chinese invaded Tibet in 1950, drove out the religious leader and took control of the country. So that would kind of be like the Canadians coming in here and saying, okay, you guys are not going to be Americans anymore, you're going to be Canadians. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> That's not weird. Are the Americans going to stand for that? No, probably not. Okay. So here's the interesting about, thing about this. Which question does this answer? They're sent on their journey by parents. So this answers the how are how are children escaping? Are they just going away by themselves? No, they're sent by parents. Okay, but this one, I'm gonna put a question mark here. For 15 years, photographer Nancy Jo Johnson has used photographs to publicize the plight of the students. Okay, that helps. Today, Tibet has been completely transformed and little remains of what it was like. What about this? You see what I'm saying about what question you ask? This answers this question. You see what I'm saying? That's the trick here. If we ask this question, we get this answer. But we're saying, okay, yeah, these get trickier. The fleeing children cross the Himalaya mountains hoping to reach India or Nepal where they can stay in special villages. Okay, so which two sentences make the best paragraph? Yeah, it looks like it's this. It looks like it's this. How do they get out of there? Their parents send them, they cross the Himalayan mountains. Does that make sense? This is tricky because it could be right, you, you could, in fact, you could put this right here, but then these two answer the how. How, do, how are children getting out of there by themselves? That's a weird one. That's a tricky one but definitely not B. And the fact that we're supposed to pick two, and those two should probably go together, means these are probably the best answers. 
And if you put those together, it makes a little series. The, ch the children are sent on the journey, they cross the Himalayan mountains. Okay. Okay, let's take a break until 11 13. Now that I have this thing, I'm making the breaks more definite. And then we'll come back and look at the rest of these. We'll do, we'll move on to some of those end ones. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay, we'll have six. All right, okay.